Hi there. We're going to be talking about getting a horse ready to load in a, a trailer and uh, or a float. And we have to realize, of course, coming from the horse's perspective, is that this is a completely foreign thing to do. It's um, not natural for them to want to crawl into a dark, enclosed space. And so we need to approach it in a way that makes sense to them. First and foremost, you want to have your groundwork working pretty good. You need to be able to ask the horse forward and back, responsively and quietly, separate from the trailer. You need a, a bit of control of the hindquarters and the forequarters. So there's some clear direction, not only with your halter or our direct feel, but also with your indirect feel and your body language. There would be times when you may need to use a flag or, or um, a rope behind them or something like that, but more than nine times out of ten, it's just preparation and just helping them along. Um, getting them to think about getting inside the trailer, getting them to think in that direction and engaging their curiosity. Using food to bribe them into the trailer will not have the same results in the long run. It can work with some horses, but in reality, we, then you're dealing with the belly, not the brain. Um, every once in a while, if one's having a hard time really relaxing in there, then I might give them some food when they're in there, but I'm not going to bribe them on to the trailer with food. So this mare's really never seen the trailer before. She's ridden in a truck um, before this. She's, so she's familiar maybe with the ramp idea. Um, with the enclosed space idea, but she's not ever seen seen or been inside of a trailer something this small, okay? So I'm just having her check it out. I haven't really even asked her to come forward. She's confident enough to put her feet on there, but I'm not going to rush it any more than to have her looking in there. Now, she, what she did there, she went ahead and backed out on her own, and um, I asked her forward because I hadn't asked her to back up. Now I'm asking her to back up, so I can give her that release and she's been responsive right throughout. If I'd let her back up on her own and just let her have that release out there after having done that on her own, then she starts to think that it's acceptable to just back out and quit on her own. Like right there, I'm just going to say, hang on, come back forward. Good. Let her have a good sniff of that, have a good look at it, get a nice release for being there. And then before she goes to back out on her own, I'm going to say now, back out. Good. Now come forward, good. I'm just working on some responsiveness. I'd like a backup just maybe to there so that we start to break that down. She's not thinking that she has to back up the whole way. Every time I ask her to back, it's not about getting all the way off, just as it's not about getting all the way on until we have responsiveness working through here, okay? Good, let her have a good look around, a good sniff. This might be where I start to add a bit of noise. Make sure she's aware of the um, surround sound we've got here. Again, see if I can just ask her to stay forward with me. She doesn't have to, she doesn't have to not move, but I just don't want her to quit altogether. And then again, back her off so that it becomes responsive. The backup has to be as responsive as forward is. It's all part of the same deal. A lot of times we get stuck going forward, 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 and we're just thinking about loading the horse. We've neglected the part of unloading them quietly and responsively, and the horse starts to do that on his own and uh, reactively. Notice there, she set herself up to sort of not be thinking towards the trailer, into the trailer. So I just tipped the nose with my direct feel and redirected her thoughts so that when I asked her to come forward, she was thinking in the right direction. Right there, she's not thinking into the trailer. So I'm just going to bring the nose, bring the nose a little bit. Right there, she's backing on her own. I'm going to step her forward. Good. Have her get, have another think about getting into there. Okay. Good girl. Good girl. The hind feet can be a big one. The hind feet can really be a big, a big piece, both coming in and coming out. Back up, back up, back. Good girl. So right there where she's put a hind foot on and off quite responsibly and quietly, that's really, really good. Okay? It can really be a sticky spot for these guys is what their hind feet are doing when they come, first come up on the ramp and when they first come up into here with their hinds and then back off. It can be a real tricky spot. Good 
girl. Girl. If I can, I like to get them sending ahead of me just a little bit in these cases. Sometimes it works better to lead them in, but a lot of times you've got to be careful the way you're doing that. I like to make sure they start to get used to having something behind them. These trailers, almost all of them have bars that'll go back behind their hind quarter. Back. Good. Ooh. Ooh. I want to start to break down that forward and back equation just a little bit. Okay, now one, one thing you want to be careful about here is you start to get on an angle. You don't want her falling off that side if you can help it. I might just swap sides, bring her up a little notch if I can. Good. Start to shift that hind quarter maybe just a little bit. She needs to put weight on the other foot in order to really do what I'd like her to do. I don't think it'll scare her too bad if she does fall off, but good girl. If they start to back, good girl, good girl. Okay, I'm just going to tip that nose away from me. Just tip that nose away. I need some of that bend working through that back up there so the hip starts to come around to my left, okay? If they start to back up while they're in there, and we try to hold them in place with our halter, our direct feel, um, and they're pretty committed to getting out, you're going to end up in a tug of war and it can be really detrimental, okay? Um, they can pull back pretty hard and smack their head on the roof of the trailer and things just can go from bad to worse. They get a big fright or they get hurt doing that and they start to think that they were right about this being a, not a good idea. Okay, so we're not trying to hold them in the trailer. We can't hold them in the trailer if they're not if they're not committed to that, okay? So instead, we're just trying to make the right thing easy and the wrong thing difficult. Like right there, now she's in trouble because she left of her own accord, okay? I'm wanting, even though she's not been particularly bothered about this process, I'm wanting her to get a little more release, get a, get a little more thought and, and time to process with her feet up here, not thinking that the answers are out there back behind her somewhere. Okay? And again, always waiting for me, back, 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 always waiting for me to back her off, realizing, little by little, that out here we're not going to be getting as much release. Good. Redirect the thought. Good. Good. Girl. Good. Good girl. Girl. So just giving her that time. She needs a bit of time, if she will, to soak with her feet up here and um, find a little bit more release. So far it's been as much her idea as mine to get up here, which is good. It's good that she's curious, it's good that she's confident enough, but then she starts to think that the release is out here somewhere. Okay, so contrast is what We'll get her thinking about doing this a little bit more and having a little bit more release up here is where out there wasn't as good a deal as what she was expecting. Okay, it doesn't have to be painful. It doesn't have to be too intense to begin with, but just a little bit of busyness out there, some, some quick transitions. Just give her the chance to just settle here a moment, have a nice soak, okay? If she still insists on going back out, then we'll go back out, that's fine. There, that's better. Good girl, now she's licking and chewing, 
and she sort of just parked her feet up there pretty happily for a moment. Okay. Just keep that nose soft as you back. She needs some practice with that. This mare, when she came, was extremely high-headed, and she would back reactively, throw her head up, and almost rear at times. So this backing, and backing quietly out in and out of the trailer like this, is a really important thing for her, and really, really important that we changed her way of doing that before we bothered with this. Good girl. Okay. Another thing you want to be aware of is if your horse is going to get bored or over stimulated, over good girl, good girl. Okay. Just gonna easy, easy. Ooh, ooh. Again, I was gonna back her off there, but I just would rather her just break it down a little bit. We start to be able to have a bit of more of a conversation back where it's a little less, where she doesn't feel like she's got to get all the way off of here all the time. Okay. Really breaking that down. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Seems happy enough in here. She's just not sure about staying. So, right there, she's falling off the side. That was good for her to experience that. I'm just going to hang out here a moment and try to get her to settle a little bit. I'm not seeing any reason for that kicking. I don't see any flies or, or such. Um, she is pretty quick to kick at other horses, so it could be just a sign of her um, working through things here. Good girl. Good girl. Again, as you're in here, you want to make sure that they're aware of some of the sounds that are going to be being made so that we're not um, tricking them into thinking that it's just going to be nice and quiet all the time. Good girl. That was much quieter. Nice, quiet step back. Didn't try to do more than what I asked. Now she's licking and chewing right away. That's what we're talking about and trying to break that back up down. And... Um, make sure that she's thinking about it, not just flying backwards. So as we go here, I'll continue in and out, in and out a few different times. I want to start making sure, even out there on the ground, that she can move forward uh, with some pressure or, or a stick or a flag or something in behind her hindquarter. I want to see about her moving forward off of that before I, I put that bar behind her. Um, some horses are particularly claustrophobic. You might need to do some more prep with a, a, a bit of a tight spot or put them through a squeeze between a barrel and a rail or something. Um, some of those things can help prepare them for the um, constrictions of being in a trailer. Good girl. Good girl. Some of them are going to be a little more at ease to begin with if you're kind of up here with them just a bit. Just obviously need to stay safe with that and maintain your space. Again, making sure you have your body language working for communication so that uh, your space is something that they're more aware of would be a really good thing. Back. Back. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Forward. Good. Nice big step forward. Having a good look around in here. Back. Back, back, good girl, good. Try to get those hinds, see those when those hinds freed up, then she was inclined to do a little bit more than what was required of her. Good girl, back, good girl, good girl, good, good girl. Back. I like to get to where I can work it from both sides of the horse, um, from along the side, but also from the front. Just different ways of getting them loaded. 
Right now I'm not too concerned about her sort of moving from side to side along the ramp, but a couple of times you notice she started to think about being just a little bit evasive. If your horse starts to get his hind right around here and really try to point his nose out the other way, it's a matter of redirecting and letting him run into those, those places where they're thinking the wrong direction. You're blocking those thoughts and trying to redirect those thoughts.